Today, the classroom is going to be focused on one of the more common metabolic problems, and in particular, a metabolic problem of the liver. The liver is, I like to joke, it's the soccer mom of metabolism, which is like a, like a busy mom within a family at the heart of everything. Nothing happens without the liver being involved in, with the process if it has to do with nutrient metabolism. The liver is unique because it can handle every nutrient, um, whether it's making the nutrients or storing the nutrients or burning the nutrients. It is unique in that it has its hand in all of them, even the, the random rare ones like lactate or a little less rare like ketones. And then, of course, the big ones like glucose and fat. And it's the fat in particular that we want to talk about today. Fatty liver disease is the most common liver disorder worldwide. And at its core nowadays is a metabolic problem. Indeed, there is a new name that has been suggested. Rather than calling fatty liver disease non-alcoholic fatty liver disease, it's something a little more complicated, unfortunately, like metabolic associated disorder of the liver or something like that. But suffice it to say, call it whatever you will, it is a metabolic problem that results in the accumulation of fat within the liver. Um, there are implications that go beyond just having fat in the liver. Um, and that is what the fatty liver can turn into. So this is an idea or a, a problem that is a gateway problem, where once the liver starts to accumulate fat, it has opened the door for more serious liver problems to begin. Um, for example, non-alcoholic fatty liver disease can then progress into non-alcoholic steatohepatitis or NASH. And what was once just a fatty liver is now become a fatty and inflamed liver. That's the hepatitis. Anytime you hear that suffix itis, think that whatever the previous part of the word is referring to, it's inflamed. And then once the liver is fatty and inflamed, then it can become scarred, which is um, fibrotic or liver fibrosis. And then you get to cirrhosis, which is much more serious. So again, one of the reasons it is valuable and worth our time to talk about fatty liver disease is just because of what it can turn into. Um, as I already mentioned, it is the most common liver problem worldwide, and it's, it actually affects about one in four people. So 25% of all people have fatty liver disease. So this is a shockingly common problem. And of course, it is closely mir mirroring other metabolic complications like obesity and diabetes. And of course, underlying all of this is insulin resistance, which brings us to um, the first of the meaty topics within this broader topic. Now, let's take a moment and discuss what insulin resistance is. So insulin resistance is a problem with two parts. It is a two-part pathology or disorder. On one hand, we have the fact that insulin isn't working particularly well. That is the insulin resistance part of this two-part problem. And remember, that's not a universal phenomenon. That is not a global phenomenon happening within the body. In other words, some of the body's cells are responding to insulin as well as they ever were, but some aren't. And thus, we have the insulin resistance part of this definition. But at the same time, and indeed in the context of fatty liver disease, this part of insulin resistance is more important. We have chronically elevated insulin levels, a condition technically known as hyper insulinemia. Anytime you hear the end of the word emia, that means in the blood. Hyper, of course, means high. So high insulin in the blood. There is no insulin resistance without hyperinsulinemia. The two are inseparably connected. And again, in the context of fatty liver disease, it is an essential component to understand why the liver is getting fat. 